Welcome into the Michigan State Hockey Hub. It's been a while, but we're back after a huge weekend, and we have two gurus of Michigan State Hockey. You all know them. Nate Bott, Jeremy Dewar, how, how are you all doing today? Doing great, Clay, man. Thanks for having us. Looking forward to a good discussion here. Yeah, yeah good, to be back. good to be back. I know. It's been a while. I, um, You know, when baseball season gets started, I started writing about baseball, and I also got a puppy recently so it's it's double whammy for me but um it, it feels good to be back talking about michigan state hockey and you know what they just did against notre dame friday night they they lost and it you know it seemed kind of like oh man are they ever going to break this streak of never winning a big 10 tournament game um next thing you know they win saturday night um i'm sure you all saw the tweet going around about mike whatever his name is talking shit about i mean not well i can say shit whatever talking shit about uh D- dylan st Cyr's size i hated that great goalie and then they com- complete the win on sunday as well and uh i was not able to watch any of it because fs2 apparently uh, i bum off my parents cable package and i'm gonna have a serious conversation with them about you know three dollars a month for fs2 i guess but guys <laughs> Let's talk about last weekend. What were your all's takeaways? What was your favorite thing that you saw from the weekend? Um, especially, Jeremy, I want to hear just kind of your emotions that you took away. I know you were at a hockey game. So, Jeremy, what, why don't you kick it off here and kind of tell us just whatever you want to say about the last weekend. I mean, I felt like I was finally got to be right about something because everyone the whole week was asking me, like, hey, how are you feeling? How are you doing? I was like, I felt confident. That, like, I think every, what I told everyone was that, Notre Dame without Ryder Ralston just didn't scare me because <laughs> Ryder Ralston carried them. The one game that they beat us that, you know, in the regular season, he carried them. So I thought, ah, it's no Ryder Ralston. I'll be fine. And I was pretty much confident until about midway second period on Saturday. Where I was like, are we ever going to score? <laughs> like we outshot them like 45 to six over the last two periods. And it's one, nothing Notre Dame. Um, but finally, like that first goal goes in Saturday. It was like, okay, this just feels like we're we're gonna get through tonight. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, I didn't know how they'd respond Sunday. Like, it's not like these guys have played <laughs> like a a game like that, right? Like, you, you got the monkey off your back, but now you got to respond and win another game on the road. So, I don't know. I I, I do. Nate Bot was in the building though Sunday, so I felt mm-hmm. good. Now, I do want to get a little bit of more of how you how you your emotion of it because i know nate you know he's a journalist he's got to stay neutral i'm going to respect that but jeremy you or you know when i really started getting on twitter and talking michigan state hockey you were one of the first people i connected with with that and uh you've helped grow so many people's interest in this team just from your um fandom i guess and even to some extent reporting and i know that had to feel really good just seeing Michigan State, a team that you are so passionate about and connected to, um, take a step that I know we've been waiting to see for so, so long, and they finally reached that. I know it's not over, but just walk us through how that made you feel as a fan. Man, just uh, vindication for one, because it's just like, you know, it, it was a real weird summer of just trying to, think that I knew what I was talking about again because I was so wrong on Dan Cole but being like, okay, this is different. He comes from the same spot, but this is going to go different. It's going to be different this time. Um, But yeah, man, it just, it kind of felt unreal. Like I never, you know, I I grew up pretty privileged, you know, as an MSU hockey fan. Like, I mean, by the time I start to remember hockey is like Anson Carter's here, you know, and like that, that forward was my MSU hockey fandom. So you know, it was kind of like being a basketball fan here. Like we didn't miss the tournament. This, making the NCAA tournament was a given. I don't know, didn't know what it was like to not make the NCAA tournament until I got to like college, and we just started missing them all the time. Um, so, yeah, man, it was is vindication and just like you know, like my my first thought because I watched the end of it in the locker room because <laughs> we we finished up right about three and a half minutes left in the game. Um, so I ran back to the locker room, grabbed my phone, started streaming it. And I just like, all I could think of was like, oh, thank God. Like, my first thought was my son. Cause I was like, you know what? 
he doesn't he can maybe grow up with good msu hockey <laughs> like it, he can have the childhood that i had we can live here you know good hockey's back the guys who i grew up watching are all on the bench <laughs> you know like nightingale i watched brad fast i watched brad fast taught me at msu hockey camp like that was all the stuff going through my mind was just like all right this is this is amazing and i got to be at a rink when it happened so it kind of felt full circle and just kind of overwhelming like i didn't know what to do like i i gotta get home i gotta shower but i also want to tweet through it like <laughs> what do yeah. i do <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, that was a major struggle for me, not being able to watch it and just sitting back thinking, like, how much time I've invested into this and to think I can't even watch it unfold. But it was cool in a way to sit back. And um, I can't remember the last time I was sitting there on Twitter, like, refresh, refresh, re you know, just thinking, man, I'm this in tuned to a game that has a legitimate outcome. You know, this time a couple of years ago, like, if I couldn't watch it, it's like, okay, that's totally fine. I know the outcome, right? But Nate, I wanted to ask you not only your thoughts on um, the games from last weekend, but as someone who covers the team, how you have seen, because I know this is year two or three for you, just how you've seen it change and how you've seen that re reception from the fans, not only like with your work, but just overall the feel of being in the arena or in, in the rink um, every night. Yeah, man, uh, it, it's certainly different. It's year four for me, actually. Um, but, you know, just the engagement uh, on my stories and just the overall, you know, engagement on online or or even just, you know, I'm walking into the arena, I'd usually just go right to the press box. I don't get – I'm wearing my credential. I don't get stopped by anybody. No, You know, they're just, you know – and now I have all these fans, you know, coming up and saying, hey, like, what's your opinion on this? Hey, what do you think is going to happen here? And it's like – you know, it's just it's just an interest level that hasn't been there in the last, you know, four or five, six years. And um, then that's also evidenced by home games. I mean, the home the home atmosphere was as good as it's been since, you know, they, they were winning national championships. So um, just in that respect. And then, you know, it helps me. I get I get a few more page views and stuff on my on my work, but, you know, with people interested. But. Yeah, and then you even look at just this past series. A, a lot, there's a lot of Michigan State fans there over the weekend at Notre Dame, and uh, you know it was it was nice for them to to <clears throat> to travel more and, and you know be really excited and engaged with how this team's doing. Yeah, my my parents were happy to pay for the extra hotel night Saturday night because yeah. they they were down there and they were happy to pay it. So, and I am. Um, it is funny how far they've come. I went to Notre Dame. Um, when Michigan State played them, it must have been 2017, 20. I, I don't remember what. Michigan State beat them on the road when they were number five or so. And I just remember thinking, like, this is the biggest win I have seen. I mean, it's like that in North Dakota and, like, a few others sprinkled in, right? Like, those are the standout wins. A random November night where Michigan State, you know, got some puck luck probably and won a game. You know, like, it did, in the grand scheme of things, mean much. It wasn't a program deciding when it didn't change. It didn't shift the momentum. Now we look at this season and I know the, you know, the way this season went was the out of conference um, play in the beginning of the year was, was really solid. Michigan state was creating some buzz. We were all trying to calm our, our nerves and excitement about it. Um, Cause as much as we were excited, I think we were all also nervous at the same time. And um, you know, when they went into the GLI, like, that did not go as planned. And I was a little bit worried, like, man, if this unravels again after how much fun it's been. But they were able to string it together. Not the best stretch of hockey um, in the second, early second part of the season. But at the end of the day, they did enough. They never gave up. They've kept fighting. And they've earned a chance to play one of the best teams in the country and the best team in the Big Ten in or you know, with a chance to continue their season and get a berth to the NCAA tournament, being where we are today, how likely did you all think this would have been um, when you you know the season started? When I, I guess we'll jump to Nate here first. How yeah. likely did you think that this would have been back in August and September when when we were really getting started? Zero percent. <laughs> I mean, there's I, and and you can. 
you can talk about everything that, you know, Nightingale was saying and what the players were saying, you know, with early practices, you know, after, you know, their first series, you know, first couple series. And, you know, you want to believe it, but, you know, the last three, four years have been saying the same thing. You know, even last year, Michigan State was had a winning record after the GLI and, and you see everything fall apart. And um, that may be a little more to some injuries and other stuff. But, you know, just – I mean, at the begin at the beginning of the season, no, there's no chance. I was thinking that Michigan State would spend more weeks than not ranked in the top 20. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't really a realistic uh, viewpoint from from pretty much anyone who's followed the program, you know, in the last few years. But you know, now as as the season progressed, you know, you hit that once you hit that stretch in the second half, I think where where they they win both against Penn State at home, you know, in overtime and shootout, and then. They sweep Notre Dame. Then you're thinking, okay, well, it's it's real. And and then you just look at this past series, what it means, how big of an impact it is for the program moving forward. I think something that gets a little overlooked is all these guys who, who are going to be back here next year and the year before and the year after, they don't have to answer questions of, are you guys going to be the team who gets it done? Are you guys going to be the team who finally wins a Big Ten tournament game? Are you guys finally going to be the team who – gets a shot at making the NCAA tournament, gets a shot at home ice, you know, in the playoffs. You know, this team's accomplished that now. It, it, and now, like you said, they have the opportunity to go to Minnesota. If they win that, they'll 99% be likely to be in the NCAA tournament. And then you have the next week a chance to play just for, to be, for an automatic berth anyway. So, you know, it just just what it's been done has been remarkable. But before the season, this this was not a, in the realm of possibility. Jeremy, man, I no, no, <laughs> I, I, I. Before the season, my thing was like, I, I thought the highlight of my season was going to be the August first commitment run, <laughs> and then you just look for like, we don't get blown out every night, and we don't, you know, like even early in the season as we were winning games, <clears throat> like for me it was. I would win some games, but like what I was excited about, I was like, all right, we're not winning two to one where we got out shot 41 to 23. Like we're winning and we're out shooting teams and we're doing this and that. It's like, okay, okay, okay. And then GLI happened and I was like, uh, these, uh, these aren't that good of teams. <laughs> like I, I thought tech was decent, but like the loss to Ferris was like, okay, what are we going to do here? Um, but yeah, I, I agree with Nate. Like the Penn State series is the one that got me back on. Like, okay, maybe they can do it because that was answering the bell. Like that was after a few bad weeks. Yeah. Um, you know, and they were on to just getting blown out a couple of nights in Ohio State. Like just, yeah. So when they got off the mat with that, but I think for me, the most exciting thing is like, I mean, you look at last weekend, like, outside of Nico Mueller, who has been an amazing story, but you, you look at the guys that have been consistent all season and it's your freshmen, your sophomores, like Tanner Kelly taking a big step up. I think Nate was talking about that at the, at the last show that we were on, like just Dorward, Russell, Basgill, Shouty are like your foundation of where this is going to go. And they're all holdovers outside of Dorward, who is a new commit for Nightingale, but they're all holdovers from the old staff, but found a way to fit into the new plan. Um, and that just gives me the most excitement because I, I was nervous the season could go sideways and you're like, well, how many years do you have to be in the portal and start replacing guys and like all that kind of the Mel Tucker rebuild is kind of what I thought would have to be taking place. But now yeah. I'm just, I'm already sitting here excited about like Trey Augustine's here next fall. Let's see what can happen, man. I don't know. Like just, it's, I don't want to get overlooked this weekend, but I'm sure. Full, sure, I'm going to be the hype train is going to be out of control for me by July. So. I love that, and you know, I said um, my goal for the year was just <laughs> to win a Big Ten tournament game, um, and even that, I said it, but not with much confidence. Um, that was the kind of the 100 percent outcome, best case scenario. I thought um, so. It's just been an absolute ride, and it's been fun and. One thing Michigan State has done well is they've they've done well in the portal the past couple of years. I mean, you know, Charlie Combs came in and pr- produced some scoring when they was it was much needed. And um, the transfers this year, while not all of them played a you know put up twenty goal type game, um, Zach Dubinsky was 
awesome at his role, I thought. And, um, you know, they they had contributors all over and Michael Underwood, and I, I really like what they did in the portal, and they're probably going to have to hit that again. Um, we're not going to get into offseason talk yet because it's not the damn offseason. There's still another game ahead of us here. Michigan State taking on um, the Minnesota Gophers, who are – an absolute wagon. I mean, that is a hell of a hockey team. But, you know, there's been so many times this year where we've counted Michigan State out, where everyone thought they were, you know, undermatched or, you know, it, it, it's just they've had their backs up against the wall, right? And there's times where they prevailed. And I do not think it is impossible. It's unlikely, but it's not impossible that they win the game this weekend. I just wanted to hear your all's thoughts. Jeremy, you you can go first. And just what you see going into this Minnesota matchup and what has to happen if the Spartans want to come out on top. I mean, it's it's cliche, but Dylan St. Sir has got to stand on his head. I mean, it, you're just not going to hold them down from, from their chances, and you don't want to get into a track meet, especially at the Mariucci Ice. So I think for me, it's just – the, the, the three keys are Dylan St. Sir, they got to be extremely disciplined because power plays are going to be death against this team. Like watching Minnesota, I watched a lot of them um, their last weekend of the regular season when they took out Ohio State and it's just, just piling up power play goals. Um, you know, and Ohio State kind of lost their mind for a little bit and it went from a one nothing game early second period to 4 nothing just like that. So and that's like what you got to avoid because it's a one game series. So um, that and just like anything you can do to slow them down through the neutral zone and just make it as slow and choppy a game as possible. Um, like you just have to, because <laughs> they just roll four lines. And yeah. And I love, I thought all four lines for us last weekend were excellent. I really like, they didn't put any points up, but that Justin Jalen, Dubinsky, Tucker line, I thought all three of those guys played excellent. And like Tucker, that's the best he's looked all year. And it's a totally different play than he did last year, right? Like where he's asked to make points. Like he had to buy into a new role. Um, and I thought that's the best he's looked all season. But that also plays into their hands. Like Notre Dame is not, is not Minnesota. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just – finding a way to just slow everything down. Do not let them get speed through the neutral zone because on that big ice, if they can go out wide against these defensemen, they're, they're going to be getting shot creation. So, Nate? Yeah, I think it starts with <clears throat> um, with St. Cyr. He's going to have to be, be on top of it. He's going to have to have one of his best games, but – um, I think really what what Michigan State, you know, a big thing is going to be they they got to there can't be any little things that that give Minnesota a chance where it wouldn't happen unless it was it was their fault. You know, you look at at Notre Dame on on Saturday, they get a two on zero because of a you know a kind of shoddy line change, and that you know they end up scoring. They can't do stuff like that. They can't. They have to be really clean coming out of their defensive zone. They got to be crisp with their pet. They can't. They can't afford to give Minnesota chances that are off of their mistakes because Minnesota's already going to get enough chances just by generating it themselves. You know, you could play really sound defensively and Minnesota can still score four or five goals on you just the way that they operate. So I think I think really it's going to be – they're going to have to play a perfect game in that regard where they're not turning the puck over. They're really conscientious of, of where the puck's in on the ice when they're changing their – uh, they obviously, you know, can't take take more than one or two penalties because, you know, Minnesota, like, they're just a wagon on the power play. And then, you know, I think, um, you know, just just what they did against Notre Dame, you know, they they had a, a number of chances. You know, there there are times where, you know, you just throw the puck on the net and you can stuff can happen. You know, you look at the third goal from Sunday Sunday's game. You know, that's just you win a face, you earn a face off in the in the offensive zone, you win it. And, you know, it goes cycles to the blue line. Nash puts a puck on that. It hits off a Notre Dame body right in front, right in front of the net. Tieran Shouty just kind of pokes it in. You know, sometimes the, sometimes there's games where those goals are, you know, those goals just generate because you're putting pucks on the net and good things happen. And I think that, you know, sometimes, you know, a Minnesota team with the with the blue line that they have with three guys who you could put on an NHL roster now and they'd 
they play fine. You know, sometimes those those chances are are going to come up big. And, you know, even look at, you know, when they were at Minnesota, they had a 2-1 lead, you know, in the second period. And, you know, Minnesota gets a goal, I think, where the net came off. But they, you know, they reviewed it and they called it, called it a good goal. And then, you know, that's enough for Minnesota to get the momentum and go boom, boom, boom. It's, you know, 6-2 now. And, you know, yeah. but it's I a, think really just being, imp- being important and conscientious of, you know, the little things I think is going to be really big for them. If they can bottle that start again, that would be nice. Because it wasn't even just 2-1. They were out shooting them. They were out playing yeah. them the first 30, 35 minutes of that yeah. game. Um, and I, I think that's just so huge. Like, Minnesota was off last week. You have all this momentum. Like, jump on them for 10 minutes and, and build yourself a little bit of a padding, right? Because you know they're, the wave is coming. They're, they're not going to sit back for all 60 minutes. Like the wave is coming. But if you can jump on it early and they're a little a little bit maybe rusty getting out there, like that's huge. So Yeah, and huge Minnesota has, has a lead high in talent that, you know, they have special talent that Michigan State simply does not have on the roster. That does not mean that Michigan State cannot win this game. It's kind of the perfect recipe for the – uh, Cinderella type story of a win, right? Where it's, you know, Minnesota is the number one. They're one of the best teams. They should easily win. Yet here's this senior six year goaltender for Michigan State. And if this is his last game, you know, he's going to be completely focused, right? I mean, I don't, I, I'm sure he'll play in like the ECHL or something or whatever opportunity comes next for him. But, you know, a lot of players on this team understand, and that's how upsets are usually constructed right it usually has to do with one team that's has all the focus because they understand how much of an underdog they are again extremely unlikely right but that's typically how an upset happens is lot you know a, the better team um doesn't take the night off necessarily but sometimes they just are a little bit less sharp and again it, it's going to take luck. It's it's going to take some special plays being made, but um, the penalties are a big thing. Like Nate said, and Jeremy said, man, I just, I don't want to see any of those frustration penalties. Um, they, they cannot afford to give Minnesota any opportunity at all like that, because not only is it two minutes where Minnesota's on the power play, but it's also two minutes where Michigan State's probably not going to be able to score. And we know that it's going to take as much offensive ability for for Michigan State to win this game. Um, Really exciting matchup. Like, I'm fired up. And it's kind of a cool spot to be in. And I don't know how you all feel about this as fans of whatever teams you are fans of. But when you're the underdog in in a situation that's kind of like playoffs, It's almost kind of fun because when you're not the underdog, it's kind of nervous, right? And you're kind of tense and you're just kind of like, just win the damn game, right? But when you're the underdog, it's just kind of like, let's just go out there and kind of have a wild time and see if we can pull this out. I like being the underdog. Yeah, I think for for like Michigan State fans and and everyone who's been following this team, I mean, at this point, you're playing with house money. You're not like, yeah, an NCAA tournament bid would be awesome and a huge step forward and, and all this stuff but like at the end of the day that was not that's not what first year that's not what this was supposed to be this was not supposed to be a, a team who's who's got that opportunity so I think having that viewpoint and looking at it from you know you know it's okay if they don't beat Minnesota or even looking at it like hey why not we're already we already got here we weren't expected to so you know let's go do the damn thing yeah, I just say still I say it's house money. House money. Like there is no reason to be tight. I, I was talking to someone too and I was trying to explain like people were asking me like how, how big of an upset would it be? Like did this be like how how big like how how nervous is that to be? It's like not only did these all, guys all play each other four times this year, but hockey is so small, like these guys have played against each other at 14U, 15U, they played junior together, like like no one in that room is afraid of anyone on Minnesota. Like they've all played Logan Cooley. They've all played Jackson McComb. Like the, so at the end of the day, as much of a wagon as Minnesota is, like this isn't even like one of those upsets where you go play 
you know, the NCAA tournament, he plays some team that you've never seen. And you're like, who is the, like, these guys are amazing. Like, I, no one's going to be scared. Like, and they, they're probably sitting there to say, like, we were up 2-1 and we, we choked it away. So, um, I think they're going to be a confident bunch, but just play hair on fire. Like, you have nothing to lose. Like, <laughs> they're the team that has to be tight because they're in their home rink. They're, they're expected to just walk over you. Just no reason to come out tight just let it fly nate um can you give us any update on um i know you're around the team throughout the week and i know that you're around the team after the series last weekend and um i i I know that that you had a good time talking to nico and I, i just wanted to know what the vibe is around the team right now and if there's any insight that that you can tell us um about how they're preparing for this week well, I mean, for starters, just you know, Sunday after the after the their win, you know, just kind of waiting for for Nightingale and waiting for a couple of players to come out and just just hearing the locker room. I mean, crazy. They they're they're excited and and you know it's there's like like Jeremy said, you know, they they kind of have that. They don't feel like they need to play tighter. That they need to win or win or you know like. We can't make any mistakes or anything. You know, they're just going to play loose and they're going to play free. And 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 really, the the quote that stands out to me was uh, Miro a couple of days after the series. You know, he said, "Yeah, Minnesota might beat us eight out of ten times, but you know, it's a one game one game you know time to show out, and you know that's what we plan to do. And you know, that's I think that's really the right mindset to have. But yeah, I mean, the guys are are obviously you know super excited to to move on and be in the situation. And, you know, you just think of all like, the guys who, you know, you look at the Kriegers, what their four years were like before and, and you know, Jagger and, and Nico and especially Nico having the season that he's having, you know, scoring more points this year than he has in his entire career. And, um, you know, just guys like that, you know, to see them actually get rewarded is, is pretty special. Yeah. And I think another thing to say about this is, um, I think why it feels so good for me, and I, I am like the optimistic type fan in general in all of my sports. Um, even I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a Cincinnati Reds fan. There's no reason for me to ever be optimistic, but here I am. Um, my mentality with all this is even if they get blown out Saturday, like this season ended in a better way than we could ever expect. And this is the first time in, I was, t- I was talking to Jeremy before we had recorded. And I was thinking like, this is the biggest game and I don't know how long. I mean, a, a really long time. Um, and no matter how it ends, I'm going to be really happy because the strides that they made in year one, the building blocks and foundation that have been set is truly something that they could build off the, you know, what we're seeing this year would be a disappointment in the future. That's where they're building towards. And I don't think that's me being dramatic either. Like I, I truly do believe that that, that, could be the standard going forward is even a better season than this. Right. Um, so I, I think no matter how it ends, we have a lot to be happy about this year with, with Michigan state hockey and a lot to look forward to um, anything else before you all get out of your thoughts, anything at all. Man, you can tell how long it's been since Michigan state's had a season like this, because, you know, look, look back 20 years ago, this season would be a disappointment. So, yeah. you know, the, you know, just, kind of puts it in perspective how kind of down in the dumps it's been around here for a while. And just to see something like this, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. As I said, I think, yeah, the last time I felt like this would have been like, like 2010 ish or something like that. Like the year before and that, I I just, yeah, I don't even know. No, no idea the last time it was like a home. That's how you know it's been too long. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, like and and even like the last time they're in the tournament, right? Like they they make the tournament and ask his first year, but you're kind of like, like Tory Krug absolutely dragged this team here. <laughs> and you looked ahead and you're kind of like, well, I mean, this is cool. It's a first year coach. Maybe, maybe that's this is how we're going to start to come back. But you looked at the recruiting classes and you looked and you're like, well, this isn't really adding up that we're going to reach that again. <laughs> like, we're not making the steps forward um, coming off of an NCAA tournament and. It's just, whereas this year it, it does feel different. Like it feels like 
like we talked about with the house money conversation of just this is the this is setting a new floor and it's an exciting floor right now because it's a huge ceiling but it kind of feels like this is a great start but this is uh like proof in the pudding and it's going to be i mean you can expect more when the talent rises up like that's what i've been telling you was this is not the year where Tory Crew dragged a team here. Like this talent is still deficient in the league, um, but this coaching staff and this group of guys found a way to pull it together. But when that talent comes up too, you just gotta imagine it's you're gonna be like the Minnesota or Michigan, where you can sit in the semis and say, even if we lose, we're gonna get a number one seed, right? <laughs> like that's a pretty nice life to have. And it feels like it's possible again. So, prediction time. Let's hear them. Jeremy can go first on the prediction. I was gonna say, man, I ah, man. And we've had like two six three games. It kind of feels like maybe like a like a four two type game with maybe an empty net goal in there, or five two because of an empty net goal. But um, I it, this. The, the hockey person you can't watch this minnesota team and think like i pick against them <laughs> like i would love to for yeah. and i would love to be wrong but the, this group is insanely talented um but I, I don't think it'll be the eight nothing friday game that we had like that's the worst performance we've had all season and i and i don't think that's gonna happen again yeah i don't i don't see something like that happening either and and like you said it Sure, uh, you know I'd like to think there's a there's a way Michigan State comes out on top, but I I can't pick against Minnesota. Um, you know everything that they've done this year just you know shows how how dominant they were in the Big Ten. I think I mean they won it by what 19 points. I think <laughs> like insane. Yeah. Um, I guess I gotta hope maybe may, maybe hope some of the Gopher fans you know get get a little too crazy during the state tournament there the high school tournament this week and maybe. Maybe they get a little too burned out and they can't make their way to Mariucci. But um, yeah, yeah I, I think I'm along Jeremy's lines. I think like a like a five three or six three, something like where an empty net goal kind of comes in play. Um, but you know, and then then for then for the Spartans, it'll be just you know watching and, watch and pray. You know, there's a lot of teams ahead of them who who have you know they're gonna yeah, have to. And- I appreciate you all being professional and giving a well thought out answer. And, um, you know, actually, um, you know, I'm going the opposite. I'm going Michigan state because I don't give a shit. Like this doesn't mean anything. So I'm going Michigan state four to three. Um, I'm, I'm going to drag you all is really why I'm going with the Spartans is because if they win, I'm just going to drag you all and clip this little thing out here and put it on Twitter. So, I'm going Michigan State um, four to three, um, just because that would make my year. I mean, it would just be awesome. So I'm I'm just going to speak it into existence and uh, see what happens. All right, guys, anything else? No, man. I think that's good. I think it was a great discussion, and um, we'll see if we'll see if the Spartans are able to to pull something together and work, make a little magic. Yeah, and I just want to say thank you all so much. Um, throughout this year, anytime I've ever reached out. It's always been a yes. You all give up time in your evenings with with your family and loved ones and friends to do this. So um, it means the world to me, and I'm glad that I get to learn from each of you all as well throughout the year. So I I, I just want to say I appreciate you all. Thanks for having us, man. Of course, man, anytime. All right, baby, go green.